find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. I'm hungry, spark, but I ain't starving yet. Jane for the pain, cocktail, dollar set. Never said I was a gangster or a thug, but I'm an animal. Pizza for the taste of the pizza. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show, and I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron, and I am the uncrowned uh, champion of some sort that we'll be discussing here in a moment. Uh, doing video production here in the Pittsburgh area. We love some indie wrestling, so we're bringing it on here. For the Indie Mayhem Show, I don't know how to stand. I don't know how to sit with a belt. I, I probably look really stupid right now, but or really cool. I don't know. Hope you're on the video version this week, guys. With me, as always, well, most of the time, there's that one week where he called off and played hooky, but that's okay. He's Eamon Payne. He's the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling. I'm cutting his head off because he changed to a phone. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's okay. It's, it, it, it works out. It's, it's, the, it's the nature of this show. It's yeah. all good. Um but no, yeah, excited to be back, so excited to talk about uh, the world of independent wrestling as always. Right, right, and, and we like to get a little outside the box, and we're going to find out what Bar Jutsu is in a moment, but in the meantime, Wrestling Mayhem Show, uh, .com is the site for this, the Indie Mayhem Show, and so many other shows we do, uh, including recaps of, of the main wrestling shows, talking about why John Cena stinks and all that kind of stuff uh, on the other ones. Whatever flavor you like, we even talk about Tough Enough and Total Divas for some reason. But anyways, uh, go check that out. And you can also drop us a line, 412-206-WMS0. Good times at WrestlingMamShow.com is the email address. You can let us know, anybody you think we should be talking to. I actually got a request uh, to uh, somebody uh, kind of locally here that we should talk to. And I'm going to look into that. I'm going to be, I'm asking around. I'm going to see if he's going to be a good fit for us. Uh, but please, if there's anything you think we should have on this show, um, please let us know at any of those contact points. And, uh, and we'll check it out. Thanks, uh, Basic Sickness, for the intro, outro music for this and the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Check him out at basicsickness.com. Thanks to everybody supporting the main Wrestling Mayhem Show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Uh, you can support us, too, and get some cool, keen, great stuff, including an extra Virgil story that we had with our guest coming up here. So, Eamon, have you ever heard of Bar Jutsu before tonight in this shiny belt that I'm holding? Before tonight, I have not, but I am extremely interested, Sorg. Awesome, awesome. Well, we're going to be learning a bit tonight. I, I discovered these guys thanks to PodCamp Pittsburgh a few weeks ago, and we got in our studio to tell us more about Bar Jutsu and so much more is uh, James Matthew of BarJutsu.com. How you doing? Hey, everybody. How's it going? Feeling awesome. pretty good. Awesome. Now, you are the guy behind Bar Jutsu, right? I am the guy. I am the creator of Bar Jutsu. All right. So let's before, we'll kind of we'll skip the the preliminary wrestling questions because we do have a wrestling connection, like more so than I thought. Like the more and more we've gone deeper down the rabbit hole tonight. We have, and we that's not have. a metaphor for anything we might have been talking about <laughs> earlier. I, I apologize for that again. Uh, but anyways, uh, but but there, first of all, what the heck is bar jutsu? Bar jutsu is the American Ooh. art of bar fighting. Mm -hmm. um, it, uh, it it's it's an American version of ninjutsu. Um, Basically, what I do is I take out uh, uh, like the the bow staffs and I replace it with a pool stick. Um, I've I've been doing martial arts my whole life, and uh, oh, there I am right there. But uh, um, I I taught a lot of outdoor classes, and uh, most of my students were adults, uh, usually in their twenties or something. Um, and a lot of times I'd be referring to you would do this technique in a bar. So it got me thinking one day. Uh, after doing all these classes, it'd be funny to, to write something like a, a, a glorified bathroom reading material book where instead of, uh, instead of being like a bunch of, um, bunch of guys in, in uniforms and stuff and everything doing these techniques, uh, you could kind of relate it as, as like, uh, bar fighting. Um, so I, I wrote this book and, uh, I just wrote it in a notebook, thought maybe I'd print it up at Kinko's or something. Um, and... I thought it needed a catchy name, so uh, I teach ninjutsu. I'm certified in ninjutsu, so I just made it bar jitsu. And then, uh, you know, elaborated a little bit more on that, and it ultimately became bar jitsu, the American art of bar fighting. Because there's always, like, Japanese something or Korean something. Uh, so now you have the American art of bar fighting. So that's pretty much it. That's awesome. That's awesome. And how long has uh, Bar Jutsu uh, been out there? Now, this is the first I've, I've came across, like say, around the 
the the talk over uh, PodCamp Pittsburgh. I, I can't remember. I saw a tweet from you right. guys, like retweeted by somebody that was going to be there. Um, and, and I watched the the video we were just showing, which was like kind of with the training montage and everything. And and I'm just like, I'm freaking hooked on this thing. <laughs> uh, uh, well, it thank was you. it was like it was the kind of and, and it looks like you did that a, a little while ago, right? Yeah, that was uh that video was done in 2012. Mm-hmm. Um, I wrote the book in 2010. I uh, started pitching it. Uh, finally got accepted um, in the beginning of 2011 uh, by Tuttle Publishing. And it took uh, it took a while, you know, rewrites, going through rewrites and everything. Uh, um, it finally came out in stores January 21st, 2014. And I just got word yesterday that uh, it's um, basically the, the first edition of it has been sold out. Uh, they sold so many oh, wow. that uh, they're they're releasing a second edition February 2016. Uh, luckily that well, luckily for you guys, unlucky for me, it's going to be a uh, cheaper, um, smaller version. So if you uh, if you want one of the originals, you got to go get it now at Barnes and Noble or Amazon.com. Uh, you can really pick it up anywhere, uh, which is shocking to me because I never thought I'm not a professional writer. Right. I never thought that uh, I would. Um, write a book that was going to be in that you could walk into Barnes and Noble and pick it up. Um, and, uh, I, nobody ever really took me seriously. Right. Um, but it was something that uh, I was really passionate about. It was one of those things where I had the, I, I had the idea and people started telling me, you know, this is actually kind of funny because it is, it's not, it's not meant to be taken as serious as any other martial arts book that you have out there. It's, it's a humorous, but educational self-defense book. Right. Uh, what we do is we mix it up. Uh, we show you self-defense techniques, but we put them in funny scenarios, and uh, and then in between the chapters or the lessons, what we call them, uh, we have like stories that people have submitted to us where they talk about bar fights that they were in, uh, or they get their asses handed to them. Um, but it's uh, it's it's a fun read. It's um, it's really colorful. It's a full color book. Uh, a lot of pictures. Everybody always asks me. They're like, "Dude, I don't want to read a martial arts book. Does it have a lot of pictures?" I say, "Yeah, it has a lot of pictures." <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Wait, well, you said it's kind of like a bathroom kind of book. A it little is bit it's too, glorified so. bathroom reading material. And it was funny when the publisher, when they had me on Skype, um, you know, to do to like the final pitch. Uh, I'm like sitting there thinking, "What's the Harvard answer I could give them to how to pitch this?" And I couldn't <laughs> think of it. So I was like, "You know what? Uh, screw it." And I was like, look, guys, this is just something that somebody's going to want to read in the bathroom. Mm-hmm. I was like, something that's really, you know, just fun and it's going to give you hemorrhoids because you don't want to put it down. And uh, that is actually, that was the line that got got it sold. They mm-hmm. were like, we like that. We like that it's bathroom reading material. So, um, and, and that's pretty much where we went from there. And we have, we're, we have uh, two more books coming out, uh, kind of waiting, you know, in between I don't want to put them back to back to back and put them out there, but uh, we have a couple more written um, and should be hopefully coming out soon. If the if the re-release is 2016, then I'm hoping that, that book two will come out either late 2016 or uh, beginning of 2017. That's awesome. That's awesome. We got a few in the can there. Yeah. So so now, I say what captured me was a lot of, well, first of all, there, there's got to be a story behind this crazy belt there is a going story. on here. Now, now you told me, you, you're like, well, I don't know if I should wear this. It's a little weird. Plus, I'm just not good at holding belts. I don't have the <laughs> you muscles. You look fabulous. In I don't it. have the muscles and stuff, you man. I'm a, I'm a lowly podcaster and video editor. Come on, man. Uh, but but uh, how did this come about? Well, I was um, I started pro wrestling back in '96, mm-hmm. and which uh, was the interesting connection. Like it was what? the yeah. Um, so. so I started doing it back in '96, mm-hmm. and. Um, you know, it was I, wrestling's always been in my life. I've always loved wrestling, uh, and it was uh, it was easy because you know I, I always felt like I needed this martial arts background and do all these things, blah 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 blah. So when I finally got out of wrestling in two thousand nine, I decided to keep that, uh, you know, keep that part of my life close to me. Um, when I developed Bar Jitsu, the American Art of Bar Fighting. I have to keep saying that to plug it like that. I was going to say... The whole I, I name like, like that. I love that giant name. It's yeah. like, oh, it's the World Wrestling Federation. I mean, yeah. No, I mean, yeah. It was the WWF. Yes, the World Wrestling Federation. Well, when I when I created it, uh, it felt like it needed a lot more things. So I um, I created the Bar Jitsu Girls, kind of like the Hooters Girls. But these are the girls that go into the bars wearing our logo, our Beer Chucks logo. 
and uh, they go in and promote the book, talk about it. They flirt with the guys. There's Juliana. Uh, it's one of our girls. Um, these are not our girls. This is just. <laughs> but uh, so we have the Barjitsu girls. Uh, we I actually have a set of beer chucks. Um, they're they're very fragile, uh, but. Um, I created an actual pair of beer chucks just to make sure that it wasn't just a cool logo. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they're, they're swingable. You can swing them. Um, but uh, it still wasn't enough. So I had the, the, the Bar Jitsu girls. I had the beer chucks. I'm like, I'm missing something else, you know. So I started throwing the shirts on wrestlers like Kevin Nash and, uh, uh, you know, Tammy, Sonny. Uh, you guys love Sonny. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Sonny wears them for me. Luke big Gallows, fan, big fan. Uh, Eugene, a lot of guys, a lot of guys just, you know, going, to, I would go to shows. Christian York was a big fan of it. Um, uh, there, there's Robbie and his, his ex, I guess now. Right. <laughs> but, uh, but they, everybody, they just snag up. That's the original bar jitsu championship belt. That Bl- it, Mike blade, our champion. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's, he's holding it there. It almost looks like a saw blade. Uh, okay. it, it, it is actually a big bottle cap. Nice. <laughs> and we had two logos. We had the bottle cap logo and we had the beer chucks logo. Yeah. And the publisher said to us, uh, you know, uh, you're going to confuse people. Uh, the, the bottle cap logo is really cool, but uh, the, the beer chucks logo is more, no- it stands out more. It's more noticeable. Yeah. So uh, try not to use the bottle cap as much because it's a, it will make it a secondary logo. So um, you'll see that around occasionally. Some old school shirts will have it on there. Um, but uh, we, we mainly stick with the, the Beer Chucks logo now. Um, but getting back to the belts, um, like I always, you know, kept my ties with the, the, the workers, the, the boys in the locker room and everything. Mm-hmm. And uh, I felt like, well, you know, shirts aren't just going to cut it. So we started, uh, I, I created the, the, the version one, the Bar Jitsu belt. Mike Blade started wearing it. Uh, there's New Jack with the original logo. Um, New Jack was a big supporter of us uh, in the beginning. Um, but, uh, then Dave Milliken got, you know, got wind of it and he saw it and he thought it was really cool. And, uh, he asked me who made the, who made the beer, the, the first logo, the, the bottle cap logo. And I said, I, I did because on the side as every other belt mark in the world, uh, I, I make championship belts. Mm-hmm. Now I don't do it like Dave Milliken does. I don't CNC it or anything. I just, right. I, you know, engrave it. And he's like, well, who made that? And I'm like, I did. And he's like, What's it made out of? I'm like, uh, it's a stop sign. <laughs> he's like, what? I'm like, yeah, it's a stop sign. So he's like, you know, we can we can do better than that. So me and him uh, kind of got together online, and we went over some designs, and I said, you know, I am a huge, huge mark for the old school IC belt. So we had the logo put, put on there, and the side plates were originally two bottle caps. Mm-hmm. And then we had the American flags on it, and... Uh, I said to him, I said, I, I really want to avoid using bottle caps on the side plates because it's going to look like ninja stars. People are going to confuse it with ninja stars. So we kept, uh, you know, we kept it just circles with the beer trucks on it. And that's how we got version two. So that is, you are now holding upside down. Oh, damn. I'm, I'm just <laughs> seeing this thing. I'm sorry. You are, you... <laughs> I'm like, why is the what flag? A, what a great reference. What's the, what's the flag upside down for? I don't get that. That but, seems really um, weird. That is, yeah, you are now holding version two. Uh, yeah, Dave Milliken, he just a really nice guy. Uh, and you know, he offered to make that and, um, you know, we had a deal, so we made it and we got that. And now Mike Blade defends it at the title at the, uh, at the shows. He works a lot of indie shows around here and, uh, Mm -hmm. I I let him work it. I, Mike's a really good friend of mine. I, I met him in 96 and, um, he truly, uh, and I'm not trying to get all emotional here because I want to try to stay with the comedy side of it. But um, <laughs> Mike is more of a champion than than I could ever have anyone wearing it. He, um, I don't know, I mean, a lot of people don't know this, and I think I don't think he'd have a problem with me saying it now. But uh, Mike had Mike was di- diagnosed with cancer um, about maybe a year or two ago, and um, he was able to beat it. I was uh, I was real happy for him, real proud for him, That's and awesome. and I told him uh, it was funny because when I first made him the champion i was like yeah congratulations you're the champ uh don't be mad when you have to drop it at a couple shows whenever they we bring in like christian york and stuff <laughs> so he was like no and then he told me about the cancer and then you know he he went through the whole thing he lost his hair went through the chemo oh, wow. and uh and he i remember the day he called me and he was like dude i'm i'm, I'm free I'm, I'm clear you know it's i don't have any more cancer in me and i was like you know what dude uh you will never drop that strap 
I'm like, that is like more than more than I can hope for a champion. It's just uh, pretty. He's a really awesome guy. I love him to death. Uh, it's Mike Blade. He's a Pittsburgh legend. I don't care who debates that. If anybody out there says Mike Blade, he, he's no legend. He's just a worker with long hair. Looks like Danzig. Fuck you. <laughs> I guess he does a little bit. Am I allowed to curse? Yeah, you're, on you're oh, allowed. Sorry. You're good on Fuck this you, one. people. You're good. You're good. And yeah, and, and he's somebody I didn't know any of his history or anything. He's somebody that's popped up at uh, RWA mm-hmm. uh, a couple of shows. So, and, and again, I'm just like, oh, who's this guy, you know? Um, but uh, no, I didn't know that, uh, so much behind him. So. Yeah, he's actually, he's going to be defending it September 13th. Mm-hmm. Um, new uh, new promotion uh, mm-hmm. popping up. Is that okay to say? Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, yeah, go ahead and plug it. Yeah, so uh, CWR is it Code Red Wrestling? Yeah. Um, they're they're going to be here on the South Hills of Pittsburgh. Um, I don't know much details on the show. I just know that uh, they contacted me, asked me to uh, if they could if Mike Blade could defend the title, and mm-hmm. I said yeah, sure. So it was a, it was an honor to be asked to to do that, and uh, Mike was happy to do that. So. Um, you know, hopefully it'll be a good show. And, and that is a that is a new promotion, actually. Um, uh, Serafini that we've had early on in this show uh, is is a part of that, along with Fleck and, and uh, everything. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what comes from that. Mm-hmm. I have uh, my opinions on the number of wrestling promotions already in this area, uh, but uh, you know, I wish them best of luck in general. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, but no, that's cool. Yeah, that they they got that involved, and it's definitely something a little different, you know, uh, going on with that. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what comes from there. So, um, and, uh, well, we won't, I, I don't, I think I showed that Virgil also has the belt as well. So, but we have a little story about that, uh, uh, over on the, uh, mayhem choke gold. If you guys want to check us out on Patreon, uh, for that. Um, so, so you got the wrestling connection and everything. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I've I, I just seen in this thing. It is heavy. <laughs> I've, 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 I've held a lot of belts and, uh, and, and, and wheels in there. He's a bit of a belt mark himself. And he's already said, he already said that, uh, uh he, 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 he wants me to tell you that he wants his championship. He'll take you on in a handicap match. He's in a wheelchair. <laughs> so there you go. There you go. Um, but anyways, uh, so, so, you know, obviously your wrestling connection, you're a long time wrestling. What'd you wrestle under? What was your name? Uh, I was, uh, I was Van Hughes. More importantly, I was the steel city machine. Van Hughes. Van Hughes. Van Hughes. Um, I people hated me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the the crowd hated me and the workers hated me. I know I got along with a lot of workers like uh, a brother of mine, uh, Justin Idol. I I love the yeah, guy. Yeah, we know Idol. Um, you know he I I was there when he started. You know he, he trained in our school and everything. Um, but uh, he's one of the guy and and the guys out in uh, AIW Cleveland, Johnny Thorne. Love you, Thorny. Yep. Yep. Thorny. Um, I don't know if he's listening. Hopefully, um, Chris Bryan, uh, Chandler Biggins, love those guys. Mm-hmm. Um, there's only a handful of guys out there that actually, you know, uh, uh, I I can I would take a bullet for. Uh, really good guys. Um, when I started training under New Jack, Jack was uh, he would tell me all the time, dude, you really gotta you really gotta live up to your gimmick. You know, you gotta believe it so that whenever you go out there, people are gonna believe it. So I kind of developed that habit of when you walk in the locker room, you know, you are Van Hughes. I'm like, all right, you know. James is, he's at home, so Van Hughes is here today. And I did, I kind of, I, I had that dick persona. You know, I, I, was, mm-hmm. I, su- I was, I was superstar. I, I wasn't superstar, but I was like, just, you know, I had to keep it in there. And then as soon as the match was over, I was like, huh, okay, he's gone. He, he's done for the night. But a lot of people just would buy. And I, either I was that good and people were like, holy shit, this dude is, a, is just a, a wrecking machine. Uh, or they were just like, Fuck him, he's an asshole. Um, but either way, it, and it was like I said, it was hard. Uh, like even uh, I, I, you'd mentioned Jason Gorey. I love Gorey. Mm-hmm. Um, you had mentioned him before, and um, I think in the beginning he was kind of like Van Hughes, what a dick. And then it took him a while. He's like, ah, actually, he's kind of a cool guy. Um, but uh, and that's another guy that, that we we talk about on the show that's really taken his, his gimmick to another level. Yeah, with the Generation Dead stuff with Raver and, and the other guys out there. Um, like, you know, one of those guys, that's, every time I got, I have a new guy at ringside, I'm just like, and he comes out, I was like, get his face, just get his face. Mm-hmm. Just, just, if nothing else, get his face for the entrance. You know, you, you know, something's happening. There. Oh, he's beautiful. Mm-hmm. He, um, I'll tell you what, he is one guy that, I mean, I haven't seen, I haven't been to an indie show in a while. Mm-hmm. Um, but any indie show that I've been at, uh, Gory's always been at, and he is one guy that's always thrown himself into the match. I mean, he gives mm-hmm. 110%, not to be cliche. Gives 110%, and he's one of those guys that he gets it. He's like, I get that there's a crowd here watching us. 
I understand that we are here performing for them. So I got to interact with them just a little bit to get them into the show. He's one of those guys that gets it. And that's what pisses me off about, you know, the business because you got guys like that, but you know, he, he just doesn't get the pushes that he needs to get up, you know, get up into the, in, into the big times. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, but that's that's why I would sit and watch hours of indie wrestling before I would ever watch WWE. Uh, it's just because indie workers they know how to do it. They know how to get the crowd into it. They know how to get the pops. They they just they're into it. And, and we we talk about often that intimacy. You mm -hmm. know, just you get you get just get something on a whole another level at that point. It's rare to mm -hmm. see psychology in a match anymore. Mm -hmm. And and you know if you come Pittsburgh. You know, I, I'm sure everybody knows at one time was going to be the wrestling capital of the world, and they had to choose between Pittsburgh and Memphis, <laughs> and they ended up going with Memphis. Uh, but uh, Pittsburgh, you can always everybody everybody shits on indie shows. They're like, that's just an indie show or whatever. You can always guarantee that you're going to get good matches. At uh, not not every match is going to be great, mm -hmm. but you're always going to have somebody there that's worth watching, even if you sat through three hours of a shit show. Guarantee there's going to be one match where somebody was like, even like like facade. I love watching facade. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you watch guys like that, and you're just like, you know, I'm so glad I came here. So, and you see that resonate. I, I often uh, one of the anecdotes I have is the one show in Cleveland I was at. Eamon, you were there too, uh, where Kevin Nash was on the show, and we're at intermission, and I'm like, facade's line is longer than Kevin Nash. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you can tell. You know, there's that connection. Yeah. I, I so I did I did some quickie research as I do during the show here. I think I found your wrestling database. Oh my god! Get rid of that <laughs> right now. I can't. I didn't even know that existed. Well, there you go. I don't think they don't have a lot of matches listed for you. There's a lot of question marks in here, but yeah, it, oh wrestlingdata.com. There you are. Our research department, which was that's from Combat Zone. It's from Combat Zone. <laughs> yes, the, I worked the 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 what was it the death match the gauntlet or. I can't remember. It was in 2003 or something, but that that is uh that is awful. Look at look at El Fatador. <laughs> wow, that is like pre tattoo. That was when I yeah that was when I started getting the the ink because Jack was like, dude, you need some you need some fucking ink. <laughs> so then I, I like you know I got to, I started getting ink and then he's like, what are you gonna do with your uh, 13 year old haircut? And I was like, I guess I'm gonna start shaving my head. And he's like, oh that 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 sounds good. Jeez, so know. then I started shaving my head and everything. If you go, you find that. If you find the, uh, you'll see the difference between that picture and if you if you see the two XFW. Uh, I don't know if you YouTube the two XFW um, the birth uh, DVD. Uh, you'll see a, a short clip of me and the uh, the birth the birth the birth D A B I R F the birth. It was when we we started two XFW out in Cincinnati, which is actually a pretty good run. Um, I have a DVD sneak preview of some sort. There Dubber. it is. Look, you see me. You Dubber. see me in the in the bottom. I don't even know what jersey I'm wearing, but I'm wearing like a some Steelers jersey. These were the or days, something. I'm sure. But uh, we are these the pre bar jutsu girls? No, right here? God is that what's no. Happening here? Those are the these junkies girls? from Cincinnati. <laughs> 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 they were all Look at them junkies. Go. The birth. Uh, I don't know what this is, but there's a uh, there's like a commercial for the birth. Yeah. Um, and Jack actually had a really good idea when we were doing that show. Um. We were both uh, not not together at the same time. Uh, we were both bounty hunters at one time. And um, when we were traveling, we, we were talking about it one day. And he said, uh, calls me up. He's like, he's like, man, I got, I got an idea for a show. I'm like, okay. He's like, I called up Clev Kevin Kleinrock and uh, he's going to fly in and we're going to film the show. So he had this idea for uh, a bounty hunter show where we were bounty hunters during the week. And it's crazy because if you see the the clip, I'm 305 pounds and I'm a, I'm I'm huge, and uh, uh, we would we would you know chase these these we would skip trace during the week, and then on the weekends we would run two XFW, um, and and it would have clips of him like we're, me and him were watching the monitors in the back, and he's like you know smacking me, telling me how you know I booked a shit match and stuff. Just you know I'm like, dude, are you serious? And he's like, no, it's for the cameras, man. But. Uh, um, he had a really he had a really good idea for the two XFW uh, thing. Remember uh, when Piper did Body Slam, and uh, they did the Rock and Wrestling. Yeah. Where, uh, he did that, and I was kind of against it in the beginning. I was like, ah, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But he he was like, all right, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna we're gonna do three matches, then we're gonna bring out a local rap star, 
We're going to let them do a song. Then we're going to do another three matches. We're going to bring out another rapper. And then we're going to do the, the, the co-main events. We're going to do two matches. He's like, you know, never more than eight a show. I'm like, all right, cool. No, you know, never more than eight matches. And he packed, he packed the house every night. I mean, we had the fire marshal coming and saying, you got, you got too many people in here. So we had to turn people away. It was, it, it ran, I mean, we ran four shows and then the guy that owned the building started, uh, complaining that he wanted more money. And Jack was like, well, I got the footage that I needed for the bounty hunter show. So fuck you. And, and we ended up closing the doors. So I was like, I didn't care. Cause I didn't want to drive from Pittsburgh to Cincinnati every, every other fucking weekend. It was getting old. Um, but it was fun. I mean, and, and I tell you what, a lot of people knock Jack. They're like, oh, you know, oh, he's just he just hits people with with, uh, you know, shit. And he doesn't really know how to work a match and everything. Jack took me under his wing and, and trained me from 2005 till 2000, probably about eight. That's whenever I stopped uh, stopped traveling with him. And uh, he showed me a lot. And you could to- you could totally tell the difference between my matches before 2005 and then after. Um I mean, the guy, uh, he, he can work. Uh, yeah. It's shocking to see New Jack do an arm drag. I, even whenever I was in the ring we were working out, I was like, holy cow, he just did an arm drag. It's insane. Um, <laughs> but he knew a lot about the – he knew a lot more about the business than he likes to he likes to play. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm sure I'm going to get a phone call from him later tonight, and he's going to be like, why are, you, why are you giving that stuff away? Why are you saying that? <laughs> but uh, he was very, very smart. I mean, you know, he went to college. uh but knew he knew so much more about the business than I ever thought that he uh, mm-hmm. he would know. And he was, I mean, he was an awesome guy. A lot of people are like, oh, you know, he stabbed people and, and he did this and he was in jail and everything. You know what? Uh, so what? But uh, he, he was one of the sweetest guys I ever met. Uh, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to pay for that comment. But uh, <laughs> he was. He was just great. Um, when I started uh, doing the bar jitsu thing, um, and he had moved on. I, you know, I retired. I had a daughter. Um, I literally, I was the, my last show was November 8th, 2009. Um, uh, it was one week after my daughter was born and I was lacing up my boots. I was in West Newton at an RWA show and I was getting ready to work a match. And, uh, I was just in the, I'm in the locker room and the guy's telling me how he wants to go over stuff. I'm like, let's just keep it basic, you know? And, uh, he's like, yeah, how long you want to go? I'm like eight to 10, you know, let's just go eight to 10. And, uh, I'm lacing my boots up. Music hits, start walking to the ring. I tell the ref, I'm like, uh, let's go like four to six. We lock up. I think I, I you know, I hit the first spot and uh, I was like, Dude, we're, we're taking it home. <laughs> so right wow. after, it was like a three minute match. And uh, I, I went over and uh, I went in the back and I took my boots off and I just said to myself, I was like, that's it. I'm done. And I, I've never stepped in the ring again. It just, it's just uh, like that just changed and just the, it was gone. Yeah, I just, uh, I, it was like, um, I kind of wanted to stop. I didn't want to travel anymore. Right. And, um, right. you know, I had my daughter and I was like, I was always one of those dudes. It's like, look at you, you walking around. Oh, I got a baby. And I was like, shut <laughs> up. And then all of a sudden I had a kid and I was like, oh my God, I'm that dude. Yeah. I was like, yeah. but, uh, it's, you know, it's just kind of like, you know, I just lost the taste for it. Plus I, I had stopped watching wrestling about maybe 2006 or something. I just couldn't right, take it right. anymore. I couldn't stomach it. Um, right. So I was like, all right. Um, and, that, and that seems to happen. Like, you know, we, we, we say you get into wrestling to the extent like you did or any of these guys because you were fans first, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you're probably, what, a long-time wrestling fan? Oh, yeah. You know? Well, like, well, when, when do you think you started watching wrestling? From birth. <laughs> from, from the birth? From the birth. The birth. Yes. So, um, so, so, and I can understand that kind of waning, and you kind of took it to the limit. Yeah, I, uh, I was, um, my, my dad was a, he was a steel worker. Yeah. Um, like ever since I was born, and um, Jumpin' Johnny DeFazio was a really good friend of his. Oh wow! Um, so I was always, I always hung out with him and uh, Hurricane Hunt. Um, a lot of, and these are old, old names. If anybody knows the studio wrestling names, mm-hmm. um, but uh, I was always around those guys. Um, was growing up. And then I just, you know, we, we used to watch it all the time and everything. And uh, I remember like, oh, God, um, I want to say it was it was like WrestleMania three that uh, the greatest WrestleMania ever. Of course. Um, but uh, 
I remember like driving, uh, jumping in a car and driving to somewhere in West Virginia because Pittsburgh did not have pay-per-view yet. And we, we, wow. didn't, we didn't get it. So I remember, you know, not me personally driving because that was like, what was that? 86, 80, was WrestleMania 86 or something like that? 87? 87. I want to say. Maybe. Um, but anyways, I remember getting in a car and driving really far to some dude's house that I had no idea who he was just because he had pay-per-view. And, and I was like, that's awesome. Will you shut up? Can I watch this match, please? And uh, who knew it was going to have the greatest match of all time? You know, well, well, let me say the greatest match of all time on on video. You know, the the Steamboat uh, Macho Man. Right. But um, I mean, there's been so many. And to to bring it back, not to not to get into the the whole Fed talk here, but to, to bring it back into the Indies, there's been so many more matches that have just been absolutely incredible. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, just in the Indies alone. Um, and I've always had that love for the business. Um, and it kind of just went from there. But uh, going on the road with Jack really, I mean, it wasn't just that last match in 2009 that, uh, that kind of like, you know, put me over edge having my daughter. But uh, going on the road with Jack um, really took the flavor out of my mouth. Uh, and it wasn't, I wouldn't say it was a bad experience. It was just like, uh, like I, I got to meet, you know, I got to become friends with like uh, uh, Spike Dudley and, you know, just everybody that Jack knew all of yeah. a sudden knew me. Yeah. You know, and, and like I would walk into a show and, uh, you know, like um, Billy Gunn uh, or, or, you know, Road Dog, they, they would be like, Van Hughes, what's up? And I'm like, hey, what's up? How the fuck does this dude know who I am? <laughs> and then I'd be like, oh, because he knows me because of Jack, you know. So I started meeting everyone and then I kind of started seeing how everyone was. Yeah. And even though me and Jack got along really well, um, Jack kept me around a lot because I was the sober guy. Mm -hmm. You know, I was never I was never gassed up. Uh, I never I never took pain pills. Uh, it was funny, though, for the longest time, people were like, you know, the reason New Jack hangs out with Van Hughes is because Van Hughes supplies him all the drugs he gets. And I was like, if I supplied him all the drugs he got, I would be rich and I would look like Roman Reigns. And <laughs> you would know that that was true. <laughs> but uh I was the sober one, you know, I didn't, I didn't really drink, um, you know, I could drive and everything. So the guys kind of liked that. They kind of kept me around and I didn't mind it. I was like, Hey, you know, I'll drive everyone everywhere. Um, but seeing how these guys were, mm -hmm. um, you know, I remember do, we were at uh, hardcore homecoming and, uh, I'm sitting next to Sabu and, uh, he's, he's eating tuna and I'm like, he's like, you got a fork. And I'm like, uh, nah, you know what? I, I don't, I don't think so. And I look in the bag and, and there's a, a new Jack, one of new Jack's forks in the bag and it's got blood from the night before. And I'm like, yeah, but it's got blood on it. And, and before I could even say, yeah, dude, but it's got blood on it. Sabu starts eating the tuna with his fork. And I'm like, wow, are you kidding me? I'm like, that's how, wow. that's how out of your mind this business has put you. But stuff like that, um, stuff like that really just started slowly taking the flavor out of my mouth and, and, right. you know. I think uh, the straw that broke the camel's back was uh, another cliche phrase there. But uh, that night, a uh, week after my daughter was born, I was just like, that's it. I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to become Jerry Lynn. You like how I'm referencing the last show that we just did. <laughs> yeah. Bringing it all together. I am so we it watch, together. So they watch that, you yeah. know, that's good. That's good. Um, but uh, man, that's, that's crazy. But I never, even though I stopped working, um, I never, stayed out of touch with, with, with the boys. Um, right. I always hit everyone up just cause I, I loved them all. Um, they were all great. Um, and even like, uh, with, with Tammy, um, I had run into Tammy, uh, on some shows mm -hmm. and we, we, and we never really hit it off or anything cause her and Jack had a little history. Um, but I, I had seen her on some shows and, um, when the whole bar jitsu thing started, I was like, you know what? I need, I need the, the yin and yang thing. I need something. I need the female part to, to take over because I didn't write bar jitsu for me. I didn't want to be like, Hey, I'm, I'm James and, and, and I'm the bar jitsu guy. I wanted bar jitsu to take off and be like a household name. Mm -hmm. So like, if you look in the book, uh, a lot of the shots have like me wearing a hat because I try to take the focus off of my face. I'm kind of like, you know, I did the wrestling thing. I don't need to be in the spotlight anymore. I want to create something that, uh, you know, takes on a, a a life of its own. But I also needed another voice that could stand out in front of it. So uh, I was like, you know what? I know Tammy's had a lot of issues going on and, uh, 
you know, she's been involved in bar fights. I was like, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll hit her up. You know, I'll reach out to her. Where is she now? Oh, oh, prison? Oh, sh- <laughs> she's in prison. Well, it should be easy to find her. So I, I tracked her down, and I wrote, uh, I wrote a letter to her. I was like, hey, you know, uh, I'm sure you don't remember me and this, that, and this, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure you're, you're going through some hard times and everything, and I just hope everything is going well. And I was kind of like, you know, it's not going to work. I, you know, I, I want to reach out to her. Uh, and if she, if she doesn't write back, she doesn't write back. It's not that big of a deal. Um, and like a couple weeks later, I get this letter. And uh, my wife is like, who's who's Tammy Sitch? Who's Tamara Sitch? And I'm like, you're kidding me. She wrote me back. So we started corresponding. We started writing back and forth. And uh, I said to her, I said, you know, I know you you have some troubles. And I'm not trying to exploit that. I said, but you would be the perfect co-host for something that I'm working on. And she really liked it. She thought it was a great idea. And, uh, you know, she, she started helping me out. She started promoting it. She started getting a lot more guys wearing my shirts, a lot, a lot of guys talking about it. Mm -hmm. And, um, I mean, it really started taking off. So I owe her a lot. Um, you know, I still, I still talk to her today. Um, she came into Pittsburgh a couple summers ago and we, we filmed the pilot. Uh, for a show they didn't get picked up um mm-hmm. it was gonna get picked up but then it, it was like a long story looks uh, like looks like there's bits of them on your youtube channel there are yeah, yeah. yeah there were there were things because we were jumping back and forth about what the format of the show was going to be with the right you know what everything how it was going to go down and everybody had different opinions and stuff and she had a lot more things getting ready to go on so uh she kind of was like well if it ever takes off let me know and i'll be back uh, but she's always stayed in touch and she's been great about it and like I said, it's, she's like the most controversial person in the world. Um, and, and she's, she's tough, you know, she, she's, she's a tough chick. Um, and she's probably going to punch me in the face for referring to her as a chick, <laughs> but, uh, you that's know, okay. Just make her listen to the last episode after that and <laughs> she'll be fine with whatever the heck you said. Right. But, so, um, but like I said, back around again. And it's funny though. Like every time, every time something would pop up on, uh, on, on the dirt sheets, uh, yeah. I, I text her and I'd be like, yep, I read it. And uh, <laughs> I'd be like, I don't even want to know if it's true or not. I just want you to know I read it and I could care less. Um, but uh, she's actually, like I said, she's uh, she's really sweet. Whenever it's, when the cameras and microphones are off and everything, she's uh, she's a completely different person. And, Certainly. Uh, yeah, she's she's pretty awesome. Certainly, yeah. No, I, I know I heard nothing but good things uh, working with her uh, for a Night of Legends show a few years back. Yeah. So, dude, awesome. I feel like I've been yakking your ear off. No, this is awesome. No, so. this is great. And it's longer I get to hold this belt. Yeah. So, no. I'm okay with this. We're going to go a little over Garza. We'll talk about uh Battle of Los Angeles a little bit later. That's fine. Uh you're like in another time zone anyways, you can wait. Is he uh, in LA? He, the, no, he's is he in El Paso. I uh, El Paso. Well, I don't know if he's uh, he, he was there over the weekend, so I, I don't know. So, um but no, this is awesome. So, a uh, bar jutsu um, I don't know. Well, like, of course, uh, co-red wrestling or whatever they're calling that show. Cause I know there's a weird naming thing going on. Uh, so this will, this bell here will be defended there. Uh, you can check that out. Uh, was it September 20th, September 13th, 13th. I, I think it's like from two to five, thir- two to it's five. a Sunday, which is weird. Mm-hmm. Um, it's funny too, because September 13th is, uh, uh, it's my anniversary and they asked me, they were like, are you going to be at the show? Because we're defending your title. And I went, uh, well, it's my anniversary. And she goes, yeah, I know. But do you think that you're going to make it? And there was just this long pause on the phone. And she's like, are you still there? And I'm like, it's my anniversary. <laughs> she goes, well, we'd love for you to be there. And I was like, okay. And I turned to my wife. I was like, hey, babe, on September 13th, there's this wrestling show. And she just was like, you're sleeping on the couch tonight. And I went, uh, I don't know, Sarah. I'm like, uh, we'll, we'll work it out. We'll see. So, <laughs> but well, I've been yakking so much about the wrestling thing. I, I haven't even begun to plug our, our, uh, our bar events, like our beer Get pong Get it out. Tournaments. You got a ping pong, ping pong event or a beer pong event. So, so there you go. Um, and I hate cause it kills me to stray away from the wrestling talk because, uh, it brings, you know, it, it works me into it. I, I love the ice. I always tell people I'm like, wrestling sucks. I hate it. I don't watch it anymore. I, I still love it. I guess I just, you know, I'm still a mark for it, but, um, to keep the, the, the bar jitsu name going, I created a company called bar jitsu entertainment LLC. Um, 
what we do is we go from bar to bar in the Pittsburgh area. We've been asked to go outside of Pittsburgh, but I kind of don't have the time or money at the moment to start doing these traveling shows, Mm -hmm. um, which is one of the reasons why our pilot never got picked up. But um, we go from bar to bar and we do things like uh, beer pong tournaments and air guitar air band things there it is right there Ooh, might you think about bringing air sex into the pittsburgh area air i know somebody that knows a guy that knows a competition what is it air s- air sex i don't know eamon can you explain this to him air sex. Oh, there's a movie yeah. about it there is a movie about it we had a chris street on biz not on too long ago to uh to discuss the art of air sex um but yeah <laughs> It's uh, it's kind of self-explanatory. I yeah, guess, that's way, that's but. interesting. I'm gonna go ahead and say no on that. One. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, we get. Uh, I tell you, it gets it gets pretty exciting. Um, like the beer pong tournaments, we have championship belts. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, we have like real championship belts that we use. Um, it gets really heated. It gets as heated as a wrestling match. I mean, people mother f each other left and right, and I get nervous because I think during these tournaments there's going to be fights. But you know, everybody ends up shaking hands and hugging at the end. Um, but uh, it's um, it it turns out to be a great time. We have a new we have one coming up September nineteenth at Gorman's Pub uh, in Brentwood here, uh, up on fifty one. It's up the road. Uh, that is our three year anniversary show. It's a big show. We got Pittsburgh podcast. Uh, Pittsburgh Podcast Network, uh, Frank Mergia, my, mm-hmm. I love him. Who was sitting on that couch a he week ago. sitting on this I yes. can still smell him. It smells like Frank. It does smell like or Frank. Or my cat, I'm not sure. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh, they're, they're sponsoring it. Um, mm-hmm. We also have uh, a, a new a new company. Uh, it's it's kind of like a branch from Three Rivers Transportation. It's called VIP Transport. It's, it's an Uber app like Uber. It's just like Uber, but it's a Pittsburgh-based app. Um, it's like, they, it's like Yin's Uber sort of. Yeah, I guess you would call it Yin's Uber. I like that Yin's Uber, but, uh, they're, they're also sponsoring it, but it's, it's going to be pretty huge. Um, we're trying to get some of the, uh, we're trying to convince some of the 92, nine boys of the morning show to, to, to come in and, uh, and, you know, be, be a team, uh, be team Q 92, nine or something, but, uh, we haven't gotten a confirmation yet. So I'm, I'm kind of, uh, but, uh, like I said, those are the, some of the things that we do. Uh, the pop, the two popular things that we do are the air band and the um, the air band contest and the beer pong contest. The air band contest is pretty, it's pretty classic. Um, I don't know if you YouTube it, but there's a on um, Fista Productions, uh, who are our main go-to guys whenever we film videos. They uh, they do our commercials for us. Uh, they they plug their last one, uh, the last one we were having, and. It gets exciting because you think people just come into an air band contest and they're just going to like strum their hands and, and, you know, do the, the air band, air drum thing and everything. Uh, the one band actually won because the last time we had it, the band won because they were doing Def Leppard and their drummer only used his one arm and we gave him points for that. So, but yes. uh, it, <laughs> we thought it was creative that he only used the one arm in it and, and, uh, but we only had like this? I think there was like five or six guys. Uh, unfortunately, we do not have that video because the the team that was filming it uh, took it hostage and wanted more money. And we oh, said, no. uh, we said, "Oh no, it wasn't you guys. It wasn't you guys." Uh, but uh, yeah, we ended up losing that footage. But it's uh, it's good times in Barjitsu Land. I, I mean, I'm just pulling up the the Fista Productions YouTube page. Definitely look it up. Fista, F-I-S-T-A Productions. Look for the one in Pittsburgh. So it uh, looks like they got some fun stuff over there, including some wrestling-related videos, I notice. Yes, so. they are big. Well, uh, the, one of the main guys, Steve McCall, mm-hmm. um, he was... Who I remembered, I want to point out, I remember you, Steve, See, Steve, from IWC. He was all nervous. He was like, the Sorg, I love him. <laughs> he, he also did have a, he had a few beers in him, but he's like... I'm not drunk, but just tell him I love him. I love his camera work. He's he's a great guy, and I always talk to him at IWC. He's like he's great. Appreciate that. He's like he's not gonna remember me, and I was like I don't know, dude. He's a good he's a good guy. He's a nice guy. He may remember you. He's not gonna remember me. I was like, all right, Steve, you're you're drunk. I and I gotta say, I typically do not remember a lot of the trainees until they become a wrestler. (laughs) And he was and like we were talking about before, he was uh, he was great. He was Mm -hmm. such a good worker. That when he was about to, to graduate from the, the training program, he took a step back and said, I got a kid and a wife at home. Uh, 
I don't think I want to do this. And That's he stepped good. away from That's us good. before he even got started. I mean, and those are those are the hard choices, but it's good to do that instead of putting that stuff in trouble. Mm-hmm. You know? So. Right. All right. Barjutsu.com. Uh, anything else you need to plug there before we get out of here? We got... the. Uh, we got we got guards on the line. And no, I got uh, as much as I love holding just us. the uh, September nineteenth at Gorman's Pub, mm-hmm. uh, beer pong tournament championship. Belts are on the line, um, and I think that is it. And for anybody else like uh, like Amen down there in uh, Texas, uh, barjutsu dot com. Get the book. Look out for the reprint. Everything, uh, all that linked over there. Awesome. Uh, so uh, with the, actually, uh, if you don't mind, can I play the the the, the Sunny? Uh, you can play here? anything you want, buddy. So we're gonna we're gonna stay on here. The Sunny commercial for the Barjutsu book, and uh, of course, what happened this past week in Sorgatron Media has been a busy, busy time. And uh, and we'll see if I can steal this belt while, before we come back here, uh, right here on the Indie Mayhem Show. We'll be right back. Have you ever been that lonely guy standing in the corner of a bar, lacking the confidence to approach a beautiful woman or even defend yourself if needed? Well, this is the book for you. Bar Jitsu, the American art of bar fighting, filled with tips, techniques, and stories aimed to help you become the bar room stud that you've always wanted to be. Pick up your copy of Bar Jitsu, the American art of bar fighting, online or at a bookstore near you. He he doesn't he didn't have an iPad, so he printed out the show notes. I, I have an iPad. I didn't have it with me at with work. Him. <laughs> I printed out the, the show notes, the rundown. I'm old school. Like I was a television producer back in the day. <laughs> I love this. Print I it, love print this. It, print it. You gotta have your notes with you. And I, I love this. Out. We've had people from the stuff. newspaper on, and they didn't bring paper things with them. Okay. <laughs> I have all I have all my look at all this. I got notes. I got rundowns. I got reference. I just love old school paper. Like, yeah, they only change colors when you eat the show. But there are different colored ones when you was. Come at me. <laughs> Which there's so many oh, different anyways. Yoshis, and they were, and they and the, all the Yoshis were named Yoshi because you were the Yoshi Wait, is the dinosaur. Yoshi's like the colors; they mean different things. Like they can know, jump Yoshi, higher. There's a jumpy yeah, Yoshi. Yeah, one can spit fire. So just as a wrestler, but then also I think as a fan, it's just once again I think the psychology has been lost. The psychology isn't just in a match, but it's how you promote your show and who's your champion and. What what's going on with your storylines and you know and all these things and why you know, don't let politics get involved but I just think psychology is the main thing that's lost on people like you, you need to have a champion you know if you have a champion have a champion that that looks like a champion we should get Andrew Palace to talk about pepperoni <laughs> pizza perfectly from Slice on Broadway to uh, support Pittsburgh Podcasting perfect <laughs> Andrew Palace that wears purple and he, he has a pirate's rest. pee on his privates yeah, yes he does <laughs> we, oh, this, for that poodle. there's a giant <laughs> poodle behind me also with us from Poughkeepsie New York and he uh, by way of Brooklyn this past weekend he is the huggable Mad Mike for I got, I got Bailey bands I got your Bailey autographs I got your NXT programs. I got your event shirts. I got everything you want from NXT TakeOver. So again. <laughs> and That's we'll be talking. Horrible Brooklyn accent. And we'll be talking some NXT, which is funny since you spent most of your time in the Bronx. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Indie Mayhem Show. That was a look at everything ha- that happened uh, this week in Sorgatron Media. Thank you uh, to our interview for this week. Go check out at Bar, J- Bar Jutsu uh, and, and all the stuff going on there. Uh, really great stuff. Uh, as we, I believe we mentioned already, joining us now for the second half to talk about the weekend that he had, because good God, uh, <laughs> our good friend, uh, uh, Mr. Tony Ogarza uh, from uh, The Wrestling Revolution, uh, as we mentioned on the Mayhem Show, first uh, first ever Patreon subscriber to the Wrestling Mayhem Show. How are you doing, man? I am doing great. Uh, I actually had to ask uh, today off work because it was a really, really, really long weekend. Uh, <laughs> a lot of standing. My left uh, hand still hurts a lot because of the clapping. Uh, my <laughs> voice is back. Thank God for the podcast. So, uh, no, it, it was an amazing week. I'm, I'm I'm really, really happy that I got to go. 
Awesome. And we should mention the the event that you did attend was this oh, year's yes. uh, uh, Pro Wrestling Guerrilla <laughs> Battle of Los Angeles. Um, an event that I think is synonymous now with indie wrestling. And it's, I mean, PWG obviously extremely popular. If you follow indie wrestling, you know what it is. Uh, definitely a, an event that I'm always, it's one of those events every year where I'm like, I really want to go to that this year that I never eventually do. Um, so what was it like? Obviously, three nights uh, of, of tournament action. Uh, really great lineup of, of talent uh, uh, featuring a lot of stars from uh, uh, AAA um, uh, slash Lucha Underground uh, involvement in this. What was it like sort of the whole the whole weekend? Well, the, the, I don't know if you've, uh, how, how much you see, but I mean, the, these shows, these guys, they just have so much fun. Like, you can tell that the wrestlers are there to have fun. Uh, they're not just trying to get a, a paycheck. Uh, I think uh, being a really small show, because at most they probably do like 500 people, and it's like super, super, super packed. So you get to know the people. You get to know the fans. You get to know the wrestlers. You get to know the, the, like the ring crew. Uh, Usually for each show, you have to wait at least two hours in the sun outside in order to get in. So you mm-hmm. get to meet all these people that are, are pretty much just tailgating outside. They're not drinking, but they're just like hanging out. They have their shares, their umbrellas, and it's all nice. And, I mean, wrestling-wise, you're going to see the best wrestling. Uh, it, the level of the guys they bring is just a... Uh, it's up the charts. The the worst match that you can get at a, a PWG show is still above the good rating. So you're gonna leave happy of these mm-hmm. shows. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, uh, especially as the uh, Battle of Los Angeles this year, there's a lot of talents they brought in. Uh, like we mentioned from Mexico with AAA, also a lot of like uh, uh, UK talent that was brought in, um, uh, and some new faces to PWG. Uh, who who are some of the standouts you think from this weekend? Uh, I think the one of the biggest standouts, at least for me, uh, is he's a guy from the UK. His name is uh, Will Osprey. He is three years uh, in the business, and he's already wrestling. Like a ten-year level, uh, he's so good. He's so young. Uh, he had a, an amazing first-round match with Ed Reverett, and then uh, he later on had a match with Matt Seidel. So both those matches were like super, as you would imagine, like super high fly. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and this guy's really good. Another, he's uh, he's more well known because he's a, an older guy, but Timothy Thatcher. Uh, I think he does uh, most uh, mostly stuff like on the East Coast, mm-hmm. uh, like a ball. And he with the Thatcher, he's he's kind of like an old school type of guy. He's like more uh, like a mat wrestler catch, uh, but he's really really good. He had a, a, I think probably one of the matches of the weekend with uh, against Hero. And my understanding is that they've only had three matches this being the third one and that their matches are just like off the charts every time they meet. So the touch is definitely someone to, to look out for, uh, the names that were most over with the fans, uh, obviously Zack Sabre Jr., which is Mm -hmm. just making waves all over the world. I mean, he's huge in the UK, he's huge in Japan and he's becoming like a, a well-known name here in the U.S. Uh, another name was uh, Pentagon Jr., who, uh, granted, a lot of people know him from from Lucha on the Ground this season, but uh, he just came in and he has like this awesome persona that people were just like so hyped for him. Uh, to, to me, those four guys were the like the MVPs of, of the weekend. And I believe on night two, I want to say they had a, a tag match with uh, uh, the four uh, four Triple A guys, and I hear that went over spectacularly. I think because uh, I believe Conan was there as well, uh, uh, 
tweeting about the event and and uh i think he i think basically i i, I explained what happened exactly but like i believe all the mexican wrestlers got tipped basically uh, after yeah. the match yeah it was a it was a unique thing i i don't think i've ever seen it before the it was uh Pentagon jr and drago versus phoenix and aerostar uh they were the last match before the intermission and they they had like an amazing match uh if you've seen lucha on the ground it was at that level, to be really honest. Uh, but yeah, it was so good that at the end of the match, it's it's usually just they, they'll start clapping for everyone, chanting for everyone, and then I don't know where people started throwing money to the ring, just like <laughs> take my money, take my money, and please come back. And I, they easily, easily, easily got like fifty dollars out of it. That's amazing. So yeah, it, it, it was weird. I've never seen that happy before. So it's it's cool, but yeah, that, that 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 match uh, was definitely one of the the, the highlights of night two. Definitely, uh, and also um, I know one of the things that PWG has been kind of famous for as of late is like the celebrity appearances and being in Reseda. Uh, yes. uh, we mentioned Conan. Uh, apparently, Rey Mysterio Jr. was also in attendance, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, uh, the first night I can remember Conan. Uh, Dave Meltzer's was like two seats in front of me. I was actually <laughs> sitting. I was sitting two seats away from Victoria or Tara from TNA. Uh, there were several MMA guys. I think Tom Lawler was there. Uh, some comedians. Then on night two, I, I think on night two, Conan took off. But uh, you, you still have Meltzer and Victoria. Uh, the four horse women were there. Oh, only two of them were there. Uh, on night three, Rey Mysterio was there. He was hanging out with his son and Conan. Also, Dorian Roldan, uh, the promoter of AAA, was uh, there on the show. I'm not sure if he was scouting or just uh, checking out. But uh, yeah, th- there's a lot of celebrities. Th- th- there was a running joke. I-, I don't know if it was true because I was really excited, but they were saying that some like big top celebrity, like some- something O'Connell, or it was rejected at the door because he was over cool. So, oh, nice. It, it, yeah, it's, it's that type of show. I think Jerry O'Connell was rejected at the door. That's so. awesome. But yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, obviously, Battle of Los Angeles, a phenomenal weekend of wrestling, seems to be always. Um, and I believe the events are already for pre order on their website, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Um, but uh, yeah, it sounds uh, absolutely amazing. I mean, what would you suggest? I mean, I mean, it sounds like a stupid question, but you would suggest people go go to a PWG show because I hear the the environment is just something so special. Yeah, it's, I mean, you can see the the the, the DVDs and the videos, and you can see how good it is. Like, it's already good, but it's a completely different monster once you're in the inside the Legion Hall. Uh, like, I'll, I'll give you an experience that uh, that I had. This was on the third night, and on the DVDs, you don't get to listen to the songs that the rest has come out because of trademark and copyrights. Mm-hmm. But on the, on the first, second round of, of the final of the Battle of the Tentacles, uh, th- those matches, to start off, they're random. Like, there's not an actual bracket system. So on, this, on the third night, you don't know who's facing who. And we heard Pentagon Jr. come out. It was, I think, the third match. And so we're all, we think, we're all thinking like, oh, Pentagon Jr., this match should be good. There's still a bunch of guys that uh, he can face. A, it could be an amazing match. And then uh, people are rehyped, and out of nowhere, we start hearing Zack Sabres Jr. match. <laughs> and, and just the energy that you felt like, oh, my God, we're about to see – Something completely unique, something that's gonna be classic, like something magical. Because this is a, a, a top guy from Mexico and a top guy from the United States, and they're meeting here in this small little Legion Hall. It's one of those matches that they, they got a this is awesome chance just for being inside, like those guys meeting each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and that's the kind of thing that I think that unless you're at a PWG show, you won't even be able to experience it. Uh, just that magic, uh, just how friendly everyone is with each other. Uh, the, the fact that you're, you're, you're here, 
you're like a step away from the ring and you, you just feel part of it. Uh, I think uh, PWG has has a, a made it worse so the fans actually are part of the show and not in a bad way like other shows where uh, the fans start shouting, uh, we are awesome. But like mm-hmm. in a good way where the the energy, you can see it through television. So yeah, like it, it, I, everyone should go to a PWG show at least once. I know it's hard to do, but uh, it, it's worth it. Definitely. Awesome. Very cool. Well, definitely, uh, I fully agree with Tonio from uh, everything I hear from that weekend. Uh, uh, like I said, the, the DVDs are for pre-order already. You can go uh, to prowrestlinggrill.com to go check those out. I, I, if everything works goes the way I plan, I will definitely be ordering those as soon as possible. Awesome. I got to check out some of the matches I just got to see. It, it, um, and I can relate to that because, well, we went to King of Trios back in 2009. We're actually getting, now that the, I think they're back in Philly now and they're actually happening this weekend. Um, I was talking to the wife of the show about maybe going back to King of Trios for a trip and uh, maybe next year or something if, if, if scheduled work yeah. out of course um, and, and, and I, I remember you mentioned about being outside and that kind of like everybody hanging out and they're all there for that same reason right like we all came from ridiculous lengths for this independent show in the small Asian hall you know and that's just like the best anytime you get like you're like we're all here for this one thing and it's how many people are here for this one thing, you know? But uh, that's really awesome. It sounds like it's the West Coast, the King of Trios, to a point. Yeah, I, I actually, uh, I think that's a, a good analogy. Uh, it's, it's the same feeling. Like, months ago, you start hearing about who these guys are going to be at the King of Trios. You, you see, like, ooh, the Bullet Club's coming. Ooh, the, the Lucha guys are coming. And you get the hype, and you're there, and, and it's just an awesome environment. Everyone's friendly. Like yeah. outside, you start talking to people like, "Oh, well, how you? How long have you been coming to the to a, like a PWD show?" And they're like, "Oh, I've been here like from show number two, all oh, from I don't know 29, 29. Like, there's a lot of people like, "This is my first show." I just I, I was hanging out with a guy that came from Canada, from Toronto, nice. just for the show. And last year, I was hanging out with a guy that came from Ireland just for the show, and and. You just feel the appreciation of, of those fans that are there for this. Like, they're not going for WrestleManias or, or Triple Manias or Wrestle Kingdoms. They're flying for a little small show. It just feels so special. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. That's completely awesome. We'll have to get out there. That's great. All right. Eamon, and I think you had something you wanted to discuss too. I did. I had this idea floating around, and I wanted to pass it off to Sorg. Uh, uh, as an idea of something, this isn't going to be a regular thing on the show. We'll do this every once in a while, I feel. Because uh, uh, I feel like we're very positive on this show, right, Sorg? I mean, we love we love our we love our indie wrestling. We do. We, we do. And, and this is a supportive thing. And even, like I said, even in the interview we just had where you talk about how he had to leave wrestling – there was a lot of good that came out of that and he doesn't hate it and it's not a disdain for it. It's still something you're a part of. You know what I mean? So definitely. But indie wrestling does have a connotation and a bit of a reputation uh, in itself. Uh, and we've all been to some wrestling events, mm-hmm. indie wise that uh, you can call is, them events is, or non events. It's indie fantastic, yes. I guess is the best way to put it. Or not even an event or you just see something that you find uh, uh, that you that makes you, you know, it, it comes off as indie. Um, uh, so I, I, I wanted to make this a thing where we can kind of rant and, and vent maybe a bit on certain things that we find that, that sort of make us angry in a sense about indie wrestling. Um, and what, what spurred it was something today, actually. Uh, tell me, for, and, and if there's any promoters or anybody who, run, who helps at all with wrestling events like me and Sorg, like, please tell me if this is a thing elsewhere and not just at Inspire Pro. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the things that always angers me <laughs> for some reason, uh, and, and this is the fault of, of, of certain like really terrible indie wrestlers. Hold on a second. Um, one of you guys, I think you got one of those little mics on your on your headphones to watch. I think it's getting t- uh, tapped or something like that. We're getting a little bit of noise. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hands up. Everybody, hands up. <laughs> hands up. Um, sorry. Even sorry. Go ahead. No, that's fine. Um, what, I, what I was going to talk about was um, – There'll be times when uh, we'll make a post, for example, for Inspire on social media uh, to announce a match. 
and it'll be something along the lines of like uh, so and so is issuing an open challenge, you know, uh, opponent to be decided or whatever. Or there's gonna be a mystery opponent or a mystery partner. Or um, uh, uh, like today, for example, uh, we announced our big tag team title tournament that's gonna be happening. And it's always the really like like you know like the not the indie wrestlers that wrestle for, for example for you sorry maybe not the ones that would wrestle for like an IWC or RWA but like the lower level like that 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 lower lower level indie uh, wrestlers who who find it like smart to to like post immediately like as soon as you post out that this match is a thing posting out oh I accept the challenge. Oh, I'm I I would I I'm in. I'll do this, and it's like I don't know why that you're, we always talk about social media etiquette mm-hmm. in wrestling. Uh, why would any reasonable wrestler like do that? You know, when they know like they're not booked on the show, <laughs> and when they know like, and it really like deters any chance of you ever getting booked on the show because it's like. You kind of just look stupid. Uh, I, I see that a lot when it comes to to stuff like that. And it's like, is there a thought process that goes with that? Like, oh, well, they'll have to book me now because I accept it. <laughs> that is a weird way. Uh, I, and I do see this because I, I, I've, I've seen things. Uh, Dombrowski always shares people that, that message him that don't know that his, his company is folded, for instance, looking for work. and mm-hmm. And there's definitely people don't know how to communicate on these platforms and, and I don't know. Cause it's like, how much are they like, you know, trying to be their character on, on Facebook or whatever. And then, uh, here's me at my day job, you know, in the same breath, uh, whether they're under their real name and everything. It's so, you got to strike that balance. And unfortunately they're doing that. They're not even close to even thinking about how to pull it off. Right. Yeah. I really want to know if anyone's listening to this that like either runs social media or promotes wrestling events. Tell me, does this happen to you? Mm-hmm. Because it feels like every time Inspire does it, it always happens. So, so they're, they're, and I don't know why. Because you're the hot thing in town, man. I've never seen that. Yeah, I'm but, honestly, I, I, mean, I don't run the social media on either, either of these groups, but I don't think I've ever seen something like that. You got some kind of weird... I don't want to say attitude in Texas when it comes to your wrestlers or something like, like there's like, yeah, maybe it's, I don't know. I, maybe it's something in the water. Maybe you need know. an indie message board for all those guys to bit, bitch about each other anonymously. I, I don't know. Maybe that's where they let that out, you know? And, and now we just don't have that in Pittsburgh and, 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 and Texas needs to join it. I don't know. It's weird. Possibly. Yeah. But that's my vent. That's my rant. Uh, don't be stupid on social media. Uh, uh, how about you guys? Do you have anything that comes to mind in that, in that, in that realm oh i have nothing nothing in that realm tonight uh but uh why live pro wrestling why is every show live pro wrestling that's just that's just the kind of a question mark not not really a what the heck kind of thing um oh, like boy. like as a general title or yeah yeah although there's been a lot of and we've seen this a couple times um where and i guess they're test shows and and I and I've talked to some people they're 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 aiming to do some of these and I, I kind of understand, but it's kind of funny when I see a live pro wrestling and there's no promotion attached. Mm. To me, like as a fan, um I guess on this level of fan of 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 I'm super probably too much into wrestling. Um like I, I would look at that and be like, I don't know what kind of freaking show this is, you know? And in a world where yeah. where I've been to the show where twenty five people showed up, you know. And, and it's just like, what, I, I, what is this? You know, but I guess the people you're going to get are going to be the more generalized fan. They all, they I was going to say it has like just titling it. That has a weird kind of like traveling circus kind of vibe. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Where, yeah. Where it's, where it's like wrestling's happening. Not like a promotion is running a series of shows where it's a gathering of the wrestlers, which should be a show title somewhere actually <laughs> yeah, now no. that i'm thinking about i hold on i'm gonna i'm gonna text both the promotions i work with and, and say hey this is this is a big thing um it's like a lighter version of the gathering the chuckles. gathering of the wrestlers <laughs> and then we can do all the themes you could do with this thing uh, but hey book icp you know uh <laughs> <laughs> or too tough tony at the very least or the weed man uh, that might not work for a high school show. Anyways, I I, I don't know. It, it's it's uh it's interesting. It's interesting. But 
Um, and also, and I know somebody who's complained about this, uh, posters with too many wrestlers on it. We yeah, need everybody on the roster on this poster. No, you don't. You need the you need the five people that look like wrestlers. Because let's pr- let's face it, if you're an indie promotion, you probably have a large smattering of wrestlers that don't look like they belong on TV, and and you want people to pay money for it. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Like there should be a little bit of thought to it. Uh, IWC's posters lately have, or even actually RWA's too, uh, have gotten real kind of streamlined to a bit. You know, RWA is, is like featuring. Sanjay Amazing Red. Let's be honest. That's what's going to attract people on this thing, right? Because uh, nobody else is a, as big a name as that. All due respect, you know, mm-hmm. big to the people that go to that show, big to the area, whatever the case may be. But in that case, boom, here's your headline, right? Or boom, here's the two cage matches. That's it. And there's already too many places, people on the poster because that's a War Games match, right? Uh, you know, right. I mean, you really need to break that down okay here's here's these guys and here's the, the 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 best of the best of the rest of the card you know what i mean um so I, I, that that kind of thing needs to happen uh, garza do you have one uh, do you have anything in mind uh, since we have you on here i, I guess i could uh, build on on yours uh to all the promoters out there invest in your posters invest in graphic design yeah. in your image the, i mean just because your custom dd Bought a new PC computer with Photoshop 5.0. <laughs> Doesn't mean he's a it's a good option for to make your posters. Uh, don't don't make posters in Paint or, or Word or, or PowerPoint. Just in, invest. There's a billion graphic designers out there that could definitely use the work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and some yeah. of them are just trying to you know, get will do it for free because a they love wrestling, and b they want sample work and they want practice. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, uh, take that into account. It's RWA. Have you seen the posters in the last year versus yeah. what they were before? Boom. You know, I mean, they're just just exponentially better. And and yeah. and it's it's or or you watch something over the years like IWC, the same guys that IWC basically the entire time that I they've I've seen DVDs from them and you can see the progression of his skill level for instance right. that's sticking with somebody and holy crap like i want to hire that guy for logo design right now so i'm, I'm i'd send him a message told him i did him a solid on posters i can't wait till he hears this but anyways <laughs> um but uh but no seriously like that like that kind of stuff um and there's plenty of guys out there iron skull if you're looking for i'm sure he'll do more i don't know what the hell his rates are i'm not involved in that uh same with same with jesse that does iwc and it seems like everybody's website in the area at this point um so definitely it's out there and and video work too can can we get on that too while we're at it um i you know not everybody can just hold a camera and 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 your wrestling show is interesting there's some certain promotions and they will fully admit this their early shows do not look good because they had yeah. one person with a camera at ringside so uh, what gets i understand if you're a promoter there's way 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 too many things you're already dealing with but if video is going to be important and especially if you booked a big name on some of those early shows Make sure the person you booked has watched WWE TV and has a semblance of how do I get that to happen here? You know what I mean? Even if you don't have expensive cameras, there's a whole other conversation there. Um, but but just having that mindset a little bit. Uh, somebody I know did a wrestling promotion shoot and had did just have the mobile cam, upgraded himself to have a hard cam as well, using an iPhone and a nice, you know, two three hundred dollar camera, and but then he got the piece together because he understood it. I need this and I need this, right? That's mm-hmm. it. How, how many people have TV deals and they only have a hard cam? That blows my mind. But then it's TV <laughs> deals, as in I'm paying to put my thing on TV. So let's be honest about that. So that's all I got, that's all I got guys. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. That, <laughs> very freeing is this? <laughs> ah, ah, it's the end of the night. This is where you get the truth. <laughs> get the truth. Anyways. All right. Well, we'll see. I don't know. Like, every once in a while, I, I'm guessing, I don't know if we all need to contribute every time we do this because I no, feel like we not. all put but, a lot I mean, of... if you're feeling, if you're feeling that, 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 
that energy and you just this want is to the, let it This out. is what it's, really gets my goat. And, and and maybe if one of us have been to a show and we're like, so this thing happened. But we want to say this thing happened because we don't really want to call anybody out um, that we work with, for instance, because we're fucking professional on here, okay? We uh, yes, that's right. That's right. So uh, let us know. Hey, do you have a uh, indie riffic thing? What, what are we calling this? Just like. I will have to. You know what? Uh, I don't have a title for it right now. You know what? I got it. But one. if you have an idea there you go. for a title, I want you tweet us at Mayhem Show or uh, email us good times at wrestling mayhem show right. My idea for it is that's so Indy. But that's actually really good. That's <laughs> actually really good. Big okay, smile. Scrap the contest. And you gotta you gotta do the you gotta do the arm swing kind of thing, like the very 70s style. Hey, um, that's so <laughs> indie. Uh, but anyways, but you know what we're talking about. A little tongue in cheek there uh, on that. Garza, thank you for for uh, being our West Coast connection and, and reporting from the field for this one. It was so great. Of course. Uh, I love that this, this is a nationwide attempt at covering indie wrestling at this point. And you bring so much to this. Between that and being able to pronounce shit right on Lucha Underground is just invaluable <laughs> to our team on Wrestling Mayhem Show. And he's a contributor. Holy shit. Uh, so, uh, you know, you can become part of the show as uh, we, re- we recruit from the fan base if you haven't figured that out by now. But Thank you. TheWrestlingRevolution.com. I think I got your Twitter right. The W Revolution on Twitter's as well yes so what can people expect over that website uh we're, we're a website that focuses mostly on reviewing shows uh we review things from wwe tna ring of honor uh past shows from your honor from fip mm-hmm. uh, i'm starting to review rwa mm-hmm. uh cage fury coming soon nice uh we have a smackdown raw everything we, we try to review everything we can so and- if there's a show that you're like, eh, I don't know if you watch it, go check out the review. We said it's cool, but you could have. And thank you for covering some of the local stuff for us up here. I think it's great to get a different perspective that's not like, hey, P- oh, it's another pizza wrestling show and having that kind of idea on it. Because I think it's definitely in the area. It's so jaded right now. And I definitely love getting that, that outside perspective for you, maybe Eamon here in the future as well, and getting your ideas on it. So awesome. Eamon, he's at Eamon2, please, the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling at inspireprowrestling.com. They got Battle Wars coming up, their crossover show with Chikara. Speaking of King of Trios, yes. coming oh, up. Oh, and King of Trios is this weekend. It is this oh, weekend. Yes. Yeah. Plug as well. So check that. Is it? A, are they doing a um, IP per view or anything of that, or is it all going to uh, be? No, they are doing IP per view. I'm. I and and they are because I know they switched from Smart Mark, so I know they'll. I'm ho- hopefully they'll have their stuff out soon. I don't know what their usual rate is as far as getting those shows out, but right. Yeah, um, that's over in uh, Easton, PA this weekend. Great stuff. If you're looking for an indie follow to follow, that I, I, you won't be disappointed by that. If you're into something a little different and not fully realistic but anyways mm-hmm. um and of course sogatronmedia.com so much other stuff other than the rest all the wrestling stuff's at wrestling mayhem show.com follow us on the um in the instagram so we are an instagram uh, wrestling mayhem <laughs> show over there i don't do enough on there unfortunately it's so hard to manage multiple ones as you know amen uh so there's that uh, uh go uh, social medias Follow this show, subscribe to it on video and uh, audio versions, whatever is easiest for you, and all the other shows over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Good times at Wrestling Mayhem Show, 412-206-WMS0 is the hotline. Uh, BasicSickness.com for the Muzak and everybody else. Thank you so much. Everybody sticks around with us live in the chat room every uh, Tuesday night at 11 p.m. Eastern Time, live at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. And uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us. And make sure you support the independent of all the professional wrestling. Oh. Sick, 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 you know how I act now If you got a problem, come and see it from the back down Act wild, steady sipping chat now Show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com Hi everyone, do you like video games? Do you like reading about video games? Do you like listening to podcasts about video games? Why don't you check out insertcointobegin.com New articles going up daily, and you can check out our podcast, Boss Battle, on sorgatronmedia.com.